Okay, what are you saying people and welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. So today guys, like always, another weekly analysis for you. On the screen, other pairs will be analyzing today, but try to make sure you stay to the end of the video because I will be recapping each pair, what's happened this week, and obviously forecasting the next. So I do hope you enjoy the video. But all that said, let's get straight into it. Okay, so up first we've got Euro USD. So for this pair, not too much movement this week, a little bit sideways, but we did see that uh, continuation to the downside. And last week I was telling you guys, I'm expecting these lows here to be taken out. And as you can see, you finally have those lows taken out with um, that weight to the downside on Thursday. Uh, that I believe so the market is still bearish for USD it has been for quite a while and I'm still am overall bearish on this pair uh, coming into the week I did say I'm looking for some retracement to the upside to come and retest this area here our last you know push to the upside before we broke through so I was looking for the retest for the continuation but as you can see that never happened price is kind of in this very very choppy kind of structure here and it's just been rolling over slowly to the downside so i'm still looking for that up move uh, for your usd i'm looking for price to see that bigger retracement you know if you do get a fib on this move here from the from the high of that move to the low we've got the 50 percent there we've got 0.618 just above that so i'm looking for uh, price to pull back relieve correct itself and then continue on its journey uh, or if it does break through this support completely because it hasn't quite done that yet it's wick below but still kind of holding above that previous swing uh, that swing low point so price does break through come back retest hold then i will be looking for shorts there but as you can see my bias is still short for this one on the weekly time frame you can see we do have this support here and like i said last week i'm still expecting these lows to be taken out um, again, I don't know because price could pull back first quite a bit before it does take those lows out or it could just come and take those lows out. So I don't know when it will happen, but I'm still expecting these lows to be taken out and it could could be in the next few weeks. We could just see the, the momentum spill over or we might see some retracement. You know, we'll have to find out. Now, these are still the, the higher time frame targets for your USD to take those lows out at 1.0636. So you can see the market right now is on that weekly support. So that's why I said if we do break through this, come back to retest it, we'll be looking for the continuations. And like I said, the higher time frame target will be the area. Or if we do retrace slightly deeper, then coming into this support here, now time resistance hasn't been retested yet. So look at that reverse retest. You know into that 50 percent retracement and i'm looking for the continuation so still bearish on this one everything is still pointed to the downside monthly weekly daily full h everything is bearish so uh, if you're looking for buyers it's likely just to be retracement unless we take out some structure then okay we'll, we will have that reversal but uh, there's nothing really telling me that the market's going bullish just yet um, so still am bearish on this pair so two areas i'm looking to market to be traced to next week uh, well, one area I'm looking for the market to be traced, secondary I'm waiting for a break and retest um, of that level, which is obviously this low here. But like I said, still am bearish on this pair. So if we start using this level here as support, so we break above, start using it as support, then maybe I might go bullish and look for some levels up here. But like I said, I'm mainly focused on the sell. So for next week, primarily we'll be looking for these setups here. Uh, again, targets all the way down at 1.0636. Um, and either looking for a pullback into 1.09795 or a break and retest of the low of 1.08 for next week. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at USD JPY. So as you can see, this pair is still bullish, still creating higher highs and higher lows, taking out those highs this week. Uh, coming into the week, I was bullish on USD JPY. I did say to you guys, I'm looking for continuations to go and take out that monthly high. Uh, here on the left here at 125 uh, 850 something like that take out these highs here and as you can see price has just done that now so we've been expecting that upside for you street right everything's been looking bullish monthly daily monthly weekly daily 4h everything bullish so even though the market is extremely overextended and we're looking for you know retracement um you know there's there's no sign really that the market is about to reverse even even with taking out these monthly highs there is still no sign yet the market wants to reverse and actually long term i do think we're heading up to these highs here of course that's that's way into the future so you want to probably keep that in the back of your head somewhere but 
yeah, everything is still bullish. There's nothing really telling me here the market's going to come down yet. Um, there is a certain thing I'm looking for to get into those sales. Uh, I've highlighted uh, this high here last week, and I'm still going to focus on this high as well. Because if we can get below, back below that monthly um, level, get back below that daily 4H level there and start to give us some lower highs, um, only then I'll start to look for some shorts and, you know, back into this support down here. But of course, there's some levels here we can take profit at on our way down. So that's the only way I'll probably look for shorts. Other than that, price is still looking bullish, still above this bullish trend line here. And in fact, you know, we could see a false break of the trend line to come and test this as support and just keep rallying 127 next, 128 next, 129, so on and so forth. But as long as JPY stays weak, you know, these JPY pairs can definitely still fly. So if we do stay above that, like I said, the best way to trade these guys is just day trade them, look for the pullbacks, you know, buy them intraday and just keep following that uh, Japanese um, yen weakness and take advantage of that. If you're looking for the biggest swing trade, the reversal, then that's fine as well, but you have to be patient. And if something like this happened, break for the, the monthly, break for the daily, break for the trend line and start putting lower highs in, then I'll start to be interested with some shorts and look for something like that, look for something like this, but only if that setup does happen, I'll look for shorts. Otherwise, I still think this is gonna head to the upside. So that's the plan for next week for use JPY. If we hold 125, uh, expect the market to go bullish. If we can break below, retest, form some more highs, look for some sales back down into 121, 400 for next week. Okay, so next up we've got USD CAD. So USD CAD this week, we did see some retracement back into our level of focus, which was this support here, um, term resistance. So we're looking to see if this level will hold this week for some sales back to the downside. I gave two targets out. So one being this support here, which price actually tested quite aggressively. And also this low here, which we did not reach. We hit that first one, rebounded, and didn't get to that second area. So uh, for me, for USD CAD, as long as we stay below this level, I do think the market will will roll over, break above this. And I do think we can see further continuations uh, a little bit higher back into some of these areas. There's really strong resistance here around the 1.28 1 level. If I just highlight that, you can see here the market really respecting this area. A couple of false, well, three false breaks above that. So around this 128, um, 1.28 area, I do think if we get above that, price will probably rally into that before we do start to see some downside. So coming into next week for USD CAD, Pretty much the same thing, looking to see if the market can hold that for that rollover. If we do break above and hold that, then I do think the market will start to rally because this could be price putting a higher low to, to attack and head higher. And if that's the case, we'll break above this, probably use this as support in the retest, which is where we can look for some entries and take advantage of a push um, all the way up to 1.28. So first setup we'll be looking at is obviously the sales because the market is still below this level and still showing a lot of rejection. So if you can hold on to that, great. We'll look for some sales and back to that second target because we've hit that first target now. But if we don't hold and the market still um, continues, because I still am expecting uh, strength in the dollar. So if that's the case, you know, we could see use the cab break above, um, but we can still take advantage of that strength, you know, on the retest and a push until 1.28. So that is gonna be the plan next week for USD CAD, just keeping it simple, very strong, uh, higher time frame level there we're working with at 1.265. So just wanna see what the market does. Either we're gonna continue this bearish move down or the market's starting a bullish move. And I believe if we can break above that, we can find some nice continuations, 1.28 being the target. If not, we'll look for some sales all the way back down to this support at 1.247 for next week. Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but if you are enjoying the content and you're finding it useful, make sure you go hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure you drop a like as well. It really does help the channel out. But anyway, back to the video. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to Euro Pound. So as you can see for Euro Pound, more downside this week, which was expected. Uh, I said coming into the week, uh, my bias on Euro Pound will be for sure, so looking for the market to come to the downside. Again, the overall target right back down at these lows at 0.82. And that is still where I'm expecting the market to head to. So 
So there's two areas I'm focusing on. Uh, retest of this support and resistance, which you can see the market came up, we actually gapped up, successfully retested and dropped. Uh, and then the second area is the break and retest of this very, very strong level on the daily at 0.831. And as you can see, the market is still trading below that as well. So I'm expecting the market to, you know, come to that um, overall bearish target that I have on the daily at 0.82. Um, see if the market will just keep falling because it is still quite bearish. We've just seen the market do that the whole week, essentially. As you can see, drop, pull back, drop, pull back, drop, pull back. We've just seen that uh, very, very strong trend just continue here on the 4H. And we could see that continue you know, throughout next week, uh, back down to 0.2, 0.82, or we could see retracement come back, retest this higher time frame level at 0.831, uh, and then see the downside move and which, um, is it exactly the which I'm looking for for next week. So had that first retest, looking for the market to make one more to confirm that as resistance. And then I'm looking for sales all the way down to the 0.82. Break above, I'm not really interested in the bias because I know what my higher time frame bias is. So if you do break above, I'll be looking for the market to break um, straight back below. If the market does something like this, I'll be looking to get back below on the retest. Or if we do break above and come into this level, then yeah, I'll look for some shorts again. Um, you know, same as, same as last week. But this this is the main setup I'll be focused on. And like I said, targets back at these lows. I do think we can go a lot lower, but for next week, those are like good targets to have. So uh, Euro pound, looking at shorts, hopefully a, a pullback into 0.831, then shorts back down to 0.82 for next week. Okay, so now we move our attention onto AUDUSD. Now for this pair, had a bearish bias this week, and as you can see, we are seeing some nice downside. I gave out targets all the way down at 0.73 and that is still where I'm expecting price to head to so still a bit of a way to go and that's still my target for next week break through that we can start looking at some of these areas but I think for next week that looks like a, a good target to have but if we do break through you know we can start looking at 0.725 and all the way down here at 0.72 with this low but that's mainly what I'm focusing on for next week um, so yeah, we, we, we had a really nice false move to the upside here. Price was consolidating just underneath this level. Big move to the upside, big spike came straight back down. And if I go in the 4H time frame, you can see we're holding the lows of the consolidation, the lows of the consolidation there as resistance, which was you know the, the setup we were looking for, the break and retest of the low for price to continue down. And that's exactly what's happening. So I'm still expecting more downside for AUSD for next week. The way you can trade this is either wait for the price to really break through this support, you just about close below, but see if you can push away a little bit more, come back, hold that as resistance, then you can look for some sales and break and retest. Or if we do push back up, look for another lower high somewhere or another retest uh, of that support and our time resistance. And again, sales back down to 0 0.73. Not really interested in buys at all for next week for ADUSD, everything is still pointing down. Weekly time frames looking bearish still. So I do think the market can head a lot lower. Break above this level, we might see some nice buys back up into the highs of the consolidation. So they'll break and retest. So that is something to take into account. Um, but other than that, I would not entertain any buys this week. Obviously, maybe intraday, but from a swing point of view, uh, I do think AU is still uh, heading lower. So 0 0.73 will be the targets. So hopefully, get a break and retest of 0.74 or 0.74667 up there, but targets will be 0.73 for next week. Okay, so now we've got Entity CAD on our screen. So for this one, had a bearish bias this week, and as you can see, we have seen some nice downside um, price action. So again, last week I was telling you guys from a higher time frame perspective where I'm expecting Ensley CAD to go. We broke through the support this weekly. This is the weekly time frame for Ensley CAD, by the way. We broke through the weekly um, key support area last week, and I said as long as we stay below, I'm looking for the market to come all the way back down uh, into these lows. So any rallies I'm seeing really for Ensley CAD over the next few weeks. I'm just going to be looking to short it back down because 0.8343 is where I'm seeing the market head to in terms of trend and market structure analysis. So yeah, as the CAD, we did see some nice, um, I mean, it wasn't very, very nice. We had some news for, for New Zealand. So you can see the market spiked up and it came straight back down. So it wasn't really the, the, the best opportunity to enter. Um, again, which was during the Asian session, so I'm not really awake at that time. But you can see the market from that um, reaction to the news plummeted 
very very swiftly hitting that um, target there at 0 0.8854 and we did have uh, did have a second target which price hasn't hit yet uh, at 0.848 but as you know i'm still expecting the market to head a lot lot lower so sd card we have a really nice support level here which gave that you know one two three before price broke then we've got the retest there so hopefully ends the card we can see some retracement this week back up to 0.86 and then from there we can hit that second target for last week at 0.848 this level here and then second target for the week will be this level back down here so like I said, shorting the rallies, the price comes up, looking to short it back down, which can be looking for those lower highs all the way back down to those lows there. So that will be the plan for the cap for the next few weeks. But for next week, hopefully getting retracement back to 0.86 um, for the retest, looking for the lower high. If not, we might form a double top here because maybe the market is just very, very bearish and doesn't have enough strength to see that retracement. Um, back up into this level it might form a double top so do beware we could go short from this area but hopefully we can get that 0.86 really nice retest maximize that risk towards and first target and then second target all the way back down there at 0.841 for NZCAD for next week Okay, so next up we've got pound NZD. So as you can see for pound NZD, you know, similar to what happened with NZD CAD, again, another NZD pair affected by that interest rate, big move to the upside uh, this week, which was expected. Again, we did have that bullish bias coming into the week. The market was quite bearish and it has been bearish for quite some time now. So we're looking for that reversal for the market to, to head up. Maybe not reversal, but at least a relief. It's not a reversal just yet. Um, yes, in the 4H time frame, it does look like a reversal, but you have to understand on the daily and the weekly, the market is still quite um, bearish there. So uh, we have seen some nice bullish momentum. Looking for push back up into this area of resistance. This was the target for the week coming into 1.93. Uh, so we did see that move and I said this will be the area we're looking for the buys. Um, this support level here. So really nice support there, support there, a bit of a break. And I said if you can hold this, we'll be looking for longs for the move higher spiked through and then it did give us that move so really nice push there for pound nsd but now we're trading at a very very strong level where the market consolidated that you know failed to retrace higher and then rolled over so if we hold on to 1.93 successfully i do think the market will see some downside again first target back into the lows of the consolidation at 1.905 and then back into that second area um where we found support um this this week so if we can hold, shorts will be looking good for pound NZD. I do think the market could head higher, but it has uh, an important job to do. It has to break through this 1.93 area. I know there's a lot of momentum, but we got to keep going. Uh, and this is the area where I'm expecting the market to head to next at 1.96. You can see all this price action there, a lot of momentum. So no real structure to work with until 1.96. So if you can break above retest, that is where I do think the market will go. So if we can hold on to 1.93, shorts from there will be looking good for next week. If not, if you break above, then looking for the break and retest of that level and then uh, a push into 1.96 up there would be looking quite good. So these are the two setups I'm interested uh, for next week. Hold on to uh, 1.93, shorts back down into 1.905 and then maybe 1.89. Um, but break above, looking for the retest of that level and then longs into 1.96 uh, next week for pound NZD. Okay, so up next we've got CAD JPY. And as you can see with this pair, the market is still bullish and still pushing to the upside. So again, nothing really indicating to us that the market is ready to reverse. We've seen some crazy momentum breaking out of this consolidation, but there has been no sign that the market is ready to, to correct itself at least uh, and see some downside. So, you know, I'm still am bullish from this pair until I can find those bigger swing uh, downside moves that I do think are coming uh, in the next few weeks or so, but we have to find out, um, or days even. But uh, yeah, CAD JPY is still looking bullish. I do think the market could head higher. Uh, for this week, I said we're mainly looking at this resistance here to see what the market will do. I said if we can hold this resistance, I'm looking for the market to roll over, but we gapped uh, down um, and then shot to the upside and broke through. Retested that support. I said in my weekly analysis last week, if we hold this as support, hold 99 as support, I'm looking for these highs 
up here um, to get taken out essentially. And as you can see, the market has pushed through. So had Jay Price still bullish, um, and um, again, I still uh, advocate that the best way to trade these pairs day trade just looking to buy and take advantage of that weakness in the yen you know until it goes away and then we could look for those um, bigger downside moves so uh, as long as we stay above this 99 level here I do think the market can still head higher uh, we have had this quite this quite tightly uh, knit trend here with this trend line but I do think we can see maybe a deeper retracement take out some of these lower time frame swing lows uh, form another higher low and then probably push on maybe to 101 next because again monthly uh monthly weekly daily everything's still bullish so we could still see the market rip to the upside again in the in a market condition like this a lot of people were thinking okay now's the time it's going to roll over now's the time it's going to roll over but all in all these markets could still fly at another two three four hundred five hundred pips if it wanted to so you know never think the market can go any higher or any lower so yeah if we hold 99 i do think the market will push bullish again and again, that would be a nice place to get involved with that high low, with the high low, high low, high next low. And again, if we do get the fib out, nice fib confluence at 50% just beneath there. So we might spike a little bit lower, but generally from that area, we'll be looking good. If not, and we actually do break below, then that's the time I'll start consider looking for some shorts. If we can put some lower swing highs um, to the downside, so obviously break below the support, put some lower highs in there, and then I'll entertain some shorts back down to the origin of the trend line there at 97, uh, 97.1, 97 pretty much on the dot. So that's the only way I'll look for shorts, similar to USD JPY, I need to get below the trend line, get below um, that support area, and then I'll start looking for shorts on the lower high. If not, I think we're heading back to highs and then maybe even one on one next for CAD JPY for next week. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a look at pound USD. So pound USD for me, I'm bearish on this one still. Last week I said to you guys, I'm still bearish on pound USD, looking for the market to head lower. Uh, again, I still do have those higher time frame targets down at 1.29, which I'm still expecting the market to head to. We've obviously found support at 1.3, which we need to break to get there, but I do think that is still on the cards to, to get broken. So pound USD coming into the week was bearish, looking for some selling opportunities. I said we'll be looking for the break and retest of 1.1 of 1.3 the low never really happened kind of just consolidated at that level and i also said looking for the break and retest of this support time resistance which did happen but we lost momentum and just consolidated there for the uh, half the week so we did see that big um relief to the upside so still am bearish uh, for pound usd but we're holding on to this support so i do think this big move here is just like a, a it's a it's a euphoric rally getting people excited you know um looking for the reversal but i do think the market is still heading down um i would only look for buys for pound usd from a swing point of view uh if we break through 1.318 break through that and i do think the reversal could happen as long as we stay below this area i do think the market is still bearish uh, medium term long term and still heading to 1.29 so for next week i will be looking for a little bit more upside mainly because we're still holding on to that support and i do think we can see some type of you know upside looking for the next lower high but essentially as long as we stay below that level i'm looking for shorts so you know i'm looking for shorts if the market comes back up into this high looking for the double top or if we do push a little bit higher then i'm looking at 1.318 up here for the shorts and you know the targets like i said down at 1.3 but if we can break that we'll look for 1.29 and also if we do come back down and don't see that push up now we'll be looking for the break and retest of 1.3 uh into 1.29 so as you can see looking for shorts uh, this week break above this height then i'll uh, start entertaining some longs but move back into there looking for shorts back into there looking for shorts and if you don't see any bullish uh, momentum then we'll look for the break and retest of 1.3 of the low uh, and short into 1.29 for next week for pound usd okay so now we'll check out pound cad so pound cad as you can see not much from this um this pair this week on the daily time frame so this sideways price action um i did hand out two areas where i'm looking to get involved with pound cad so number one being the resistance that we've been trading at for some time now if we can see all those wicks 
and the second area which is this support and resistance looking for the retest of that for that uh, continuation low because pound cad still is very very bearish on the higher time frames and i do think price could still head lower i'm looking at price coming into this area here so i'm still seeing pound cad uh, head lower but we might retrace the upside first before we do roll over so um, pound cad if i go into the 4h you can see it's actually trading above this level now as support so if we can hold that we can see some upside into that second area so there could be some nice buys at the start of the week if we can hold 1.646 as support look for some buys there probably you want to drop into the lower time frames because uh, 4h is quite messy right now but if we can hold on to that uh, you can probably catch a nice move back up into that daily level and from there i will be looking for some sales then targets right back down to that same support but the real target will be you know back down into the lows there but we'll have to manage that as we go along because you know coming into this level we could still see the market do a deeper retracement and head even higher than uh, 1.656 which is this level uh, so i'll probably just look at that level but you know keep in the back of the head we can still head into that weak level but even that i, I don't expect to happen um you know next week that might take a little bit longer uh, but you can see the market is putting these higher lows here so we are seeing some type of bullish momentum you know the market is trying to push through um but it's still very very choppy and we could just take out that choppy price action which is one big strong bear move and then if we come back and retest it and find the lower high and short back down again so you know if this doesn't hold we'll be looking for shorts on the retest so i will i will draw that in there because uh, that is a setup i do have my eye on so kind of three kind of setups I'm looking at. In fact, if we do actually break that below, so we've got a bit of a trend line going on here. If we if we do actually break that below this and hold it as a resistance, then you know we could probably aim for this uh, target, that weekly target this week potentially. Because at that point you might see a lot of momentum. This could be a bit of a fake out of that level, and then we could probably see some real momentum come back in, like we've been seeing with all these bearish moves. Uh, in, in recent weeks so yeah if we can get back below the trend line uh, we can probably look for you know that sell and a uh, push into 1.626 um, but probably only if that does happen if not we're pushing up into that level and that's where we look for our, our second sell setups um, from that level for next week for pound cat Okay, so now we'll take a look at pound JPY. And as you can see with this pair, again, another JPY pair, JPY um, is still quite weak. And we're still seeing bullish momentum to the upside and we've seen some new highs. And I said to you guys last week, you know, this is the main area I'm focusing on. If we can hold, looking to see if the market can roll over. If we break through, looking for the retest for a push back into these highs. Um, um, up there at 164 uh, 650 and as you can see didn't quite get the retest um, of the level but market did you know continue to the upside after it broke through that level quite early on in the week actually so yeah um pound jpy still bullish uh, again still looking for that big correction to the downside but at this point you know the market is still quite bullish so uh, i'm going to be waiting patiently for that you know bearish move that i'm looking for but it's just not quite ready yet so for me Again, as you can see, my approach to the JPY pairs, use JPY, CAD JPY, and now Pound JPY are all quite similar. We do have some of the price action of this trend line, key area that the market is holding above. And again, if we come back, you know, have a bit of a false break of the trend line, hold that. I do think the market will push um, further to the upside. We've got this high, we've got this low, which is confirmed because we've just seen a new high. I do think the market can be traced for another continuation higher. Again, 166, 167, the market could still hit these targets out and keep flying. So we'll be looking for buys if we can hold that um, area for next week. Uh, again, only if, uh, if I was to look for sales, the only way I'll do that is if price breaks through all of these areas and then starts giving me some lower highs. In that case, I'll look for some sales. And again, back to the lows, the origins of the trend line, which will be 159 all the way back down there. So that's the same approach I'll have for all JPY pairs because they're all still very bullish. And like I said, the best way to trade them is just following that trend in the lower time frames and just take advantage uh, of that intraday momentum that we are seeing um, from the weakness of the yen. So looking for that bigger correction, it's going to take time. It might happen next week. It might happen the week after. 
um, you know, we'll have to wait uh, and see um, for the price session to happen before we can look for those shorts. And again, if we do get those shorts, I'm expecting it to go a lot lower than 159, but that's just going to target we'll have next week if we do see that bearish move. So yeah, focus on this level here, looking for a, a correction because we've seen very, very corrective bullish momentum. So I'm looking for a down move to give us that higher low for the continuation or a down move to start potentially that reversal that we're looking for. So um, eyes on this level for next week, 162, 600. If we hold, looking for continuations back to highs, break through, looking for push into 159 for next week. Okay, so now we move on to gold. So as you can see for gold, a nice rally to the upside this week, which was expected. We were looking for that continuation higher. Uh, going to 4H time frame, I said to you guys, if you break through 1945, hold that. I'm expecting, you know, a, a push back to highs, but essentially we're looking for 2000, which price is not at right now. Uh, as you can see, we hit around uh, the 1980 mark or just underneath. Uh, yeah, around about 1980 before we did see some downside. But again, I'm still treating this as retracement. In fact, all downside moves above 1945, I'm treating as retracement. And I'm still having that longer term 2000 target in uh, in my mind. So that's what I'm expecting price to head to. We've got a nice trend line here. So there's two areas which I'm focusing on. I said it on my uh, stream on Thursday, I believe. I said if we can hold this, I'm looking for a move to the upside. Uh, or if we do have a slight a slight deeper tr uh, retracement back into 1945, um, you know, into that trend line there as well. You know, we'll be looking for some longs in this area. And like I said, as long as we stay above this level, still bullish and still going to be looking for a push into uh, 1940, uh, not 1945. If we stay above 1945, I'm looking for upside targets at 2000. So that will be the targets for next week, 2000. If we break through that, probably a little bit higher, kind of at 2040 into this area. But I'm not sure if we will do that. But bullish, bullish um, bias, bullish targets for gold, 2000. Break below 1945 is where I'll probably start looking for some sales and uh, maybe back down into those 80, 90 lows, but only if that happens. So yeah, for, for next week, looking for some buys pretty early on if we can hold that resistance now and support, 2000 will be the target. If not, we pull back a little bit deeper into the trend line, then that is cool. We'll be looking to see if we can hold 90.45. And again, it's the exact same target, it's 2000 um, for next week for gold. And last but not least, we've got Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, still not looking good for Bitcoin. Um, again, coming into the week, uh, I said, if the market stays below 44, we test that. Yeah, I'm looking for the market to come a lot lower. Uh, and as you can see, we did drop, didn't quite come back for that retest, but the market is still quite bearish um, there, as you can see. So yeah, for me, for Bitcoin, I think as long as we stay below 44K, uh, and especially if we don't uh, take up this higher, so stay below 48, I do think Bitcoin's next target will be into the lows um, of um, 30K. So this is where I'm expecting the market to head to if we don't take up those levels. So uh, I'm looking for you know a setup if the market can pull back. I do you have this trend line here, which the market is just about trading underneath. It's just kind of trading along. So I'm not looking in too much into the trend line. I want to see the market really break through the trend line to confirm to me that's broken. Right now it's kind of just trading alongside it. So I'm not looking too much at that area, but there is a trend line that the market has been respecting quite well uh, in recent weeks. Um, but I'm looking at one more push to the upside for Bitcoin for that lower high. Because you can see we've been um, placing these equal highs here at 44. Then we placed the higher high at 48 drop back down and now you know the market could still be placing a higher low to head higher which is why i said if we do break through 44 and through 48 you know we do have this bullish trend intact and at that point i do think the market can head a lot higher so for buys you could be looking at a break of 44 if this is a higher low we should push up get back above uh, 44 look for buys into 48 and then so on and so forth and we could be looking at a really big swing potentially back to the 60s and 70s for Bitcoin. So that could be a nice setup to look for. But um, right now the market is looking bearish and I don't think we will do that. I think the Bitcoin will probably roll over before it does see any more uh, strong upside. So I, I'm looking for one more push uh, for that lower high, uh, either at 44, so we might see a push into 44 and then roll over to the downside 
let me actually just um, scoot that level across to make it a little bit more clearer for you guys. So back above 44, looking for that retest and continuation up. Um, if we hold 44, looking for the retest and like I said, all the way back down to 30, because in my opinion, we're just continuing this bearish trend here. So I'm expecting those lows to be taken out and a push into that key level of 30. If not, because Bitcoin might actually be ready to roll over quite soon. So we might not even see that push into 44. We might, we might only even come into this sort of area here uh, and then drop. So, you know, again, this area here, break and retest, hold this 42, 43K mark, you know, sales will be looking good from there as well. So. Uh, I'm pretty bearish from Bitcoin, so I'm stay below 44. Break about 44, then I'll start looking for the retest for some higher highs uh, and for price to push through. But you know, mainly focus on the sales now for Bitcoin. So push into 42, 43, hold, looking for sales. Push into 44, looking for sales. Break above, I'll flip my bias uh, and look for longs. But as of right now, looking for a pullback into one of these two areas and shorts back down for uh, 30K for Bitcoin. Okay guys, so that is the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed that, found that useful. Like always, any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Didn't understand anything or agree or disagree, let me know and I will get back to you there. Uh, if you are enjoying the content, leave a like, subscribe, share, um, hit the bell, you know, join the family. Uh, I do appreciate everyone that does do that. But hope you found the video useful. Have a great weekend. I will be live again next week. So I'll catch you on the next one.